Hello everyone and welcome to yet another beautiful series of Women in Stability in Times of Instability. Uh, my uh, initiative to bring inspiring and motivating women on this platform and we try and talk about a bit of knowledge share, a bit of fun and um, I think it is very bewildering to talk about a woman who is very mystic in nature, a woman who loves uh, to live on the edge, a woman who takes each day as an adventure, as an experience. And today I have with me Ayanruli Datta, very much from the city of joy. Hello, hello Ayanruli, but settled in Delhi. And I think today Ayanruli will be explaining to us a lot about human and nature relationship. Because I believe that uh, the connection between human and nature uh, sort of defines its uh, genetic architecture. And a lot of nature is responsible for, a, for mankind's social, economical, and habitual, uh, you know, and mental discipline. Would you agree to that, um, uh, Anjali? I mean, uh, you know, there can't be, uh, I cannot say. Uh, inch by saying like this is not true. Can you imagine yourself without nature around you for one? How yeah. do you feel if you wake up to see a concrete jungle every day? True. I mean, the moment you wake up and I have I've been blessed to have a little garden at my place and there's a lot of greenery around my house and when I'm standing and having this life with you, true. I can I mean, see the moment it's you wake raining up and I have had Yes, yes. I, I trees and there's raining. So, you know, this whole charm, the whole atmosphere, the whole feel gets elevated. Nature has that power and that's why we also say green is a magical color. True, true, true. And the way you see, uh, the nature makes you feel. Why are we so enchanted to see birds, butterflies around us since the 40 days of lockdown? Because they have their own way of spreading happiness. True, agree. And before we move further in today's conversation, I would really want to introduce my very special guest, Oindruli, who calls herself a wondrous by passion and a wordsmith by profession. And I'm going to get to that. And what is very interesting about Oindruli is that she loves exploring new terrains, books, tea and adda. And when I say terrains, books, T and Adda, she is very particular that it has to be maintained in that order. And we're going to talk about that as well. Oindruli is a, a spectacular columnist, having written for uh, The Hindu and Lonely Planet and uh, Times Food, Food Talk, The Times of India and Mail Today. And I am very fortunate to have read a few of your columns, Oindruli, and they are totally mind-blowing and so informative. So, and one thing which I really liked in the bio that you shared to me was that you wrote something very interesting. And today's conversation, I actually want to begin with that. When you say that you believe in more how many beautiful sunsets you have witnessed than rising up to sunrise. So, can you just share a little bit on your thoughts about from here is where we start and why not the sunrise and the sunset is what you labor on? I just have to be truly honest. It may sound very, uh, since we are live on a platform, I'm not a morning person. So I enjoy what I get. I will be absolutely awake when the sun sets. And there's a magical charm. You know, you get to see the magic light only during sunset. You really don't get to see the magic light happening around sunrise. So mm -hmm. the sunset is magical. Most of the people, there are sunset points. Most of the places will have, you'll go, you'll stand. My best uh, sunset, one of them was in here, yeah, in uh, Bing. And this is old fort, which is broken, barren. And I am sharing the same sun, the same sea, the thousands of people there, and watching the beauty go down as if the, as if the sea is engulfing the whole sun within itself. So there's this whole, uh, and promise that I will come up the next day. True. Is also what's the more uh, enchanting about it. True. The twilight zone uh, makes you feel the, the how beautiful colors nature can give it to you. True. And it has a charm that will engulf. And you're, you're also opening doors to a newer part of the day. That's the evening or the night. 
So should I uh, just summarize it by saying that you more live up to the experiences that you had the whole day and you take that experience to the next day for yep. you to begin afresh and to yep. learn from what you what has happened in a day before see uh Rajendi, life is all about that experience so i was chatting on a whatsapp with a friend of mine and he said how are you doing and i just told him i said enjoying whatever best is available around me sure. so he said enjoying is a very difficult word for to say I said no. It's just that we have made our necessities and luxuries and demands very different. We can enjoy in basic. True, and that and brings enjoy. me to the main topic of today's discussion, which is sustainability, Absolutely. zero waste, traveling more in sustainable, uh, you know, connection. So, how would you want to bring, uh, uh, you know, today's discussion forward by talking about sustainability in today's times? zero waste in today's time uh, so can we start today's discussion with something that we both planned that we want to discuss about using the optimum resources and using uh, you know uh, the the management around it uh, very profoundly so yeah. according to you anjali what can you tell us and your views about uh, travel in a more sustainable way sustainability in today's times now that things are so different zero waste what do you have to share about that see uh, firstly starting with the sustainability as a word has become the new age word people are picking up every selling every place will uh, come up with a concept that we are sustainable stay we are sustainable resort we are this but we have to also understand what exactly what to say is sustainable and eco friendly and also the concept of slow travel we go to a place suppose i have visited a place we'll be all rushing out that was five locations that we have we have to true why can't we slow down breathe soak in in a place and when i talk about sustainability personally i have it in the hills a lot as you say there are close of proximity from delhi from where i stay so i make uh, i'm really I'm sorry i'm intruding but can you bring your uh, mic closer to you yes because yeah, this is better, yeah. Yeah, this is better. otherwise uh, the sorry. is yeah please yeah. yeah so uh, you know when i talk about sustainability let's just say i am a person who always run to the hills i was just saying thinking 40 days and i have not stepped out of this whole urban civilization so when i go to the hills i will never hit for a resort i will never hit for a, a a luxury place i will always go and stay with the local there you know it's always good to bring some kind of a income some kind of a basic source of a resource for these locals because they also are they have a very tough life we need to understand that people in the hills true and uh, when i go to the hills i will absolutely need to go and focus on what they not what i want to do true because if i am not eating greeting and living their lifestyle this is basically that means i'm carrying my lifestyle from from here to there but right. my my idea of travel is to have an experience like you mentioned i am always more for experiences so i'll always make sure that when i'm in a place i will be what the place demands probably I, this is a very important part of sustainable travel that you're hinting is is that to a uh, we'll be uplifting economically the locals also absolutely. by using their bed and breakfast and we'll be able to experience their living style that is absolutely. a whole idea of traveling but yeah. most of the cases the when we travel we travel with our entire lifestyle and we yeah. try and make ourselves so comfortable that is like home away from home and we to totally miss out the fact that we are here to actually come out of a comfort zone and experience something new so yeah. i really like this first point that you talked about and in regards to this can you give us one or two examples about what you experienced when you stayed with the locals uh, you I know i was yeah. coming to that right so you know firstly uh, when i also talk about a uh, sensible and be a responsible traveler also make sure that you're not just buying a kinley or any brand of water bottle and keeping why can't we carry our own little bottle with us and keep refilling it true uh, you know it takes we always carry we don't forget to carry a backup chargers right that's a part of our life so can we make a water bottle also a part of our life yes true so these are very important and when i say uh, what the locals so they have been in numerous experiences where they've opened up their homes to a better 
uh, exp- a better feeling. So uh, I'm talking about a couple of years back. I was in this village, which is ahead of this place called Kasol, uh, called Kal- Kalga. So uh, we were staying with his homestay, and it was during Besakhi around April. Uh, so they were having. So there are three sister villages called the Kalga, Pulga, and Pulga. Okay. So Kalga and Pulga are open for tourists. Okay. and they they welcome and they make tourist stay but pulga as a village they are they have closed themselves they are no they don't have any tourists there they enter but okay. because of the place the house that we were staying and this lady the woman, the woman her maika her her father parents house was in pulga so we could go with them to the village and experience the whole besakhi festival sit with them sit niche have a lovely hearty village meal what they experience and have the typical Where people go gaga about the ra- hari rajma, the dal, the chawal, their mitha, and it was like we danced with them. So these are the simple experiences that you get when you stay. They actually open up their hearts and their houses. Trust. Me. This is That's awesome, Mindy, awesome. really, because I never once um, gave it a thought that yes, we give and bring so much of economical advantage to locals. Probably yeah. be able to access some of the localities which are not open to public, which and some of the places which are not highlighted in the travel magazines True. because yeah. of uh, maybe you know the commission share etc. But which might be the beauty of that place, yeah. which only locals can take you. And yeah. this is very sustainable traveling and. one very intriguing part that you started your conversation was that obviously when we go to a place keeping the cost in mind the travel the time we are investing we want to cover maximum places around that area yeah. wherein you are hinting to minimize uh, you know the the number of places we touch and we maximize our stay in one particular place maximize your experiences yes yeah, so uh, c- can you give us a little more your take on this phenomena so uh, uh, so let me just put like uh, i last year when i was traveling to europe with my mom so we had okay i knew for mom there are these five things that she needed to do and everything but also at the back of my mind i knew if these are not done there's always a comeback or this is not things are not going to end up here or everything people can we can still come back and see this again but we need to slow down and walk through the experiences of that lanes and by lanes even when i come to calcutta for sure i always would make sure that i do these small little experiences which i might not be getting in other cities or something that's very typical going to a particular shop because at the end of the day what you take back home is those memories those people that they give it to you so viewers i want you to know that extensive traveler is what oyanjali is i have been witnessing her journey i have been witnessing her travel since i'm connected to her and i have to tell tell you that she travels to the most exotic destinations to the most rural and the intricate ones and i'll be very happy to share some pictures from oyanjali's uh, you know travel on my page very soon and you would know that the way she covers the locality of that one particular place is par excellence i mean anyone can travel you and me but the way she travels and the keen eye that she has to capture the minor the, the minimal uh, detailing of that place is, is spectacular in really it's a very simple example i will uh, i'm sorry to cut you and tell so banaras is one city that that's very close to my heart and a lot of people uh, so for me banaras i always tell people it's for love or hate at first sight it's a very old city it is dirty in the patches and corners but what i find is very soothing about the people a lot of people have actually given a nudge saying do you like banaras i said yes that city so it always depends what you want to see what are your liking what is your take home from that and secondly experience the local food that's another highlight Can you say something more about and yes. about that? So uh, I I really enjoy my time in the kitchen at home. I'm like okay fine. I have to do at least uh, even now I make sure that there are my thankfully my mom is with me now these days. So I make sure that the meals I'll be doing the meals here, making sure what can be done. In the same way when I am traveling, at least few meals in those home kitchens of, of those people that I'm staying with, I make sure that I cook something with the ingredients that they have. also when people so shop get into their kitchen yes. to to cook in their uh, with their yeah. essentials wow yeah. right yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So uh, also the fact that uh, when I come back from any travel, if I'm traveling internationally or even any local place, if I'm when I'm coming back, people might be buying uh, what not maybe clothes or shades or shoes. I come back with five. Sorry, I so, lost. Uh, so that I can operate them and them in my. Anjali, I would want to hear that again. I lost yeah. on the connectivity. You so come I, back with. I said I come back with spices. I, I make oh, yes. Okay. So there are and you know over the period of time, friends who know me, people who know me, they started gifting me spices also. They they come back with a small little pouch of this or that something. Give us an example, something exquisite, something extraordinary of a particular area that you brought back with okay. you. Okay, very very uh, just let me. So uh, if you go down south in Kurg, they have a very local alcohol. which is made of all kind of fruit they make it of beer they make it of ginger banana any fruit they make it of peels so and it's very potent and i kind of love that so and i had one i was very keen to bring back some bottles so i actually asked the airline that i was traveling back that how much can i carry this is the bottle so i actually carried back five bottles of that alcohol and what is it called they are called the local alcohol you'll get the local uh, the local alcohol you'll just get it anywhere so you can just have, and it's pretty potent they also have a very interesting uh, vinegar called the kachampalli which is very dark and black in color used for a lot of cooking i brought back bottles of that uh this time when i went to thailand i actually picked up some thai spices very specific thai spices their paste mix from greece i have picked up some of the interesting peppercorns and some these uh special spices that we can use for cooking so uh, I, i remember this very interesting so i was in this uh, village called garli in himachal and uh, luckily the gentleman whose place we were staying he happened to spot a huge mahasir fish which was around 8 kilo big and this villager came and gave it gave it to him and that day the resort had quite a few people staying and because i could develop a rapport with this gentleman mr sood i asked him can i cook for the guest today tonight and You Trust actually me. wanted to cook for the guests at the resort. All yes. right, Anjali. Now yeah. that is what I call fun travel. Yeah, and that yeah. was a head. That was the place that we were staying. It's a very old heritage house, which was converted into a nice place to stay. And uh, with no basic amenity to cut the fish, it was a big, big fish to cut it. But thankfully, with the help of the chef, we both tried very hard to chop it, made sure the pieces come out right, made the fish curry, and it was served. And seeing the way I took so much of enthusiasm to cook it, while I was coming back from Himachal, he actually packed two live fishes for me in nicely in water so that they can breathe, and I got them back home in Delhi, and I cooked it later. So that's so, awesome, Anjali. What I'm able to understand when we thought about uh, uh, teaming today's conversation about sustainable travel is yes. we slow our travel that is we minimize our destinations and maximize our stay we try and we exploit more the local food yeah. the local joints the local mm. people stay with the local people yes. interact with them more and actually don't carry our lifestyle to that particular domain but come back with the maximum that we can bring from that particular place to our city because that is what is going to you know probably add the mystic of our memories alive so exactly. yes that that is something very beautiful which i understand from your travel now as we were discussing about you cooking in the kitchen i know another very important aspect of your personality is that you do these amazing pop ups which are commercial pop ups which get yeah. sold out much in advance and i have been telling you to do a awesome veg pop up in delhi but you always do because you are a hardcore bengali the non veg pop ups that you do but if you could tell us how does this, this entire idea and from from when did you start up uh, started doing these pop ups and um, because i know that they are very beautifully done the long tables are set the entire courses are uh, ruled out if you could highlight something about the pop up culture that you are into firstly vegendi my kitchen is always and home is always open for you so just <laughs> come thank you absolutely a good veg meal Thank so you. the pop up was like you know so I always kind of like the whole experience spending time in the kitchen. So you come back home, you have not much to do. How much will you order, or how much will you eat a flavor that you have not grown up with? You adapt to flavors, yes. 
but there is certain nostalgia the certain craving that you have maybe a kalonji uh, chalk that you want particularly in that curry that you are looking for or maybe a particular garam masala that you want or something that you have uh, we we, uh, we have memories with flavors right yeah. Yeah. so uh, where you when you crave so then i started doing my own little food cooking and everything and slowly thankfully my friends were good enough they started appreciating it and then one fine day i got an opportunity to host a pop up and i was kind of scared there were 10 people a little skeptical more than scared i was a little skeptical how will i be received but that was the uh, that 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 was the breaking point like once the knot was untied and i was like okay fine thankfully i've been accepted so here goes then i did then i started doing my bengali and having been raised in odisha my odia pop up were also recently appreciated so people knew that bengali and odia food is something uh, uh, bengali food i would still say people get a little availability because of the known people how are doing it but odia food is still less available to people so uh, these two pop ups i keep doing off and on for the last few months i have not done any but it was just sort of work but uh, what happens also there are seven or 10 or 15 strangers they come over the table and they all share their stories they share their uh, whatever they like and dislike and as i open the table i will take each and little uh, ingredient that's there on the table they could be a special ingredient that focus on the table that day and i'll talk about it i'll explain them why a particular thing is eaten during the season why you don't eat what happens what doesn't happen and somehow the bond that food does i have not seen much things doing it so it's beautiful so, when you say that you actually bond with strangers over food yes. uh in a table which everyone probably maximum must be strangers to one another yes and, uh, it must be do you have many foreigners also who come i do have few of them and also the thing is with uh, quite a few i had uh, people from the us whom i had been teaching this indian cooking so they wanted to learn the basics of indian curry so everything that has liquid in nature that is flowy is a curry for them so then i actually take these classes with these people so that they want to experience and then they come for a nice wholesome meal and it's a good thing that way so uh, if you know this fish called hilsa which is a lot of bones which is a very you need to be an artist to eat that fish it's not a easy fish to eat i had this uh, guy uh, who was some uh, i'm forgetting where he was from but he was climbing the himalayas on his way back he came to have this meal at my place and i was stunned by the way the way the precision that he ate the fish so that's how the experience is that is taken so yes um, i think you have to do a vegetarian pop up soon when all Absolutely. of this is over uh, anjali because i have uh, amit pruthi i am sure you must be knowing amit pruthi yes. and yes. um, amit says that yes you have all to curate a veg pop up very soon so he totally resonates uh, with my feeling absolutely amit veg pop up on the way <laughs> so um i know one thing more about your personality anjali is besides uh, doing these pop ups you also menu plan for uh, you design the menus for uh, the the vivid restaurants uh, i i know about that and one very important part of your bio is that nift is a place where you have actually taught the students in nift the entire timeline of how the food started uh, in early times of india and now to modern uh, food in india right from the harappan civilization down to a modern civilization that's such an intriguing topic to discuss with the children can you like talk about your subject here and how did you come about teaching these children um, you know the entire uh, you know the timeline of how food uh, started right from the medieval or the harappan age down to the modern times now see uh, i actually it just it just happened in a very uh, funny way i have i had gone to nift to give a guest lecture on uh, social media and communication and then when i saw the ge course and the general elective courses that are given there i thought what why not food as a course could be introduced and taken up by the students it's a very interesting thing and it's a wider area it's an interest for everyone so i happened to finally happened to talk to the hod design a full curriculum for the college and luckily got approved and today yes so when i say food india across the east west north south across all the diameters and the peri- has a huge 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 variety 
we cannot say this is one cuisine that represents india precisely every part is authentic even in those part there are sub parts which will make it more authentic so giving the people and you know the best part why i always do a class i always tell them in, instead of me teaching i'm here to learn because you are 40 i'm one you 40 will give me 40 experiences that i'll take back true i will just give you one of my experience so i make it an interactive in a class that people experience people share their food memories they write about it i take them for these walk food walk so we know how the culture of a the culture of a place the taste of a place you get to know when you taste the food of a place so when i do this breakfast walk with the kids i make them understand why this thing is given with this why this served as a condiment you need to try it eat it you may not like it but taste it for one so that you know what goes into it so coming back to this entire course anjali can you highlight to my viewers anything specific that was there in the early stages of food uh, present in india or a diversification that you see in comparison to today's times something that you remember out of your uh, context the grains have always been a very vital part like uh, today when we focus on barley and we focus on millet and other grains millet has been a poor people's grain but millet has always had a prominence in its own time today when it's seen as a super food we are accepting it we are going out to the market we are telling you buy it the summer crop the winter crop so you know food is celebrated in india that's why we have baisakhi when the harvest festival we need to understand because i don't see any other place that is celebrate food in the crops in this bigger way so you celebrate the whole idea of laying a table any any occasion any function is a great lay of food and because what is there in the season they will highlight that in the table yes true and when ha huh, it's that so when people ate during this ancient times they had a lot of uh, what was available a lot of these spices or maybe potatoes or tomatoes they were not even available thousands of years back or hundreds of years back they are a part of migration so i also emphasize on the fact of cross cultural influence of food let's just say calcutta where we both are very aware of the city it sees almost six to seven varieties of influence be the portuguese the armenian the avadi the chinese and whatever a lot of bengali dishes that we have today may not have been originally bengali too True. so they all have their roots somewhere else some have their origin and even till date that's why when you sit on a table there is a koti and a bangal differentiation that goes the east and the west because that's how food binds and even shows the difference what each place that's from the each segment will have a special speciality and each sub segment will also have more speciality and the so flavors change yes so it's like a whole science so absolutely like a whole science when we're talking about food pertaining to its uh, you know a particular season eating right and i think all of these food as we are calling them super foods now like millets and jowar and bajra they you all know, are coming simply, back you know simply for example we eating a lot of these seeds the sunflower seeds the chia seeds and this i mean i remember getting cranky when my grandma used to give me bitter gourd seeds or maybe a jackfruit seed so jackfruit seeds you can make you can boil them mash them and make a very good dish is to real cranky you are cooking with peels so our culture our heritage has always seen no wastage policy yes true you use everything that's possible in the kitchen you don't throw out anything yes i remember i just met a michelin chef and uh, uh, he actually uh, taught us that you know the the peel that comes out of like uh, the beetroot peel or mm -hmm. uh, Uh, the cucumber yeah, potato put beetroot loki any vegetable right so they all are used for fantastic dishes and it's like yeah. a zero waste food that we can actually uh, sustain to and the peels have the highest fiber so whenever for example when i'm eating a cucumber i'll never peel it off i'll eat with it oh really i yeah, i don't peel it off i never peel it off in a salad or anything i eat it with the peel because there's no harm in eating it i just make sure that it's cleaned well of course yeah that's it Awesome. even eating flowers there's so many flowers that are edible can you, around can you, us can you guide us with that a bit on really simple uh, the the we you know uh, moringa is a superfood these days sajna or the drumstick 
but east and down south of india has known moringa for years has known drumstick for years so drumstick flowers they have a little bitter taste but they make as great super food uh, on a regular easiest flower that one can relate is the banana blooms you can eat your marigold you can cook with hibiscus mm -hmm. so these are all interesting then there's another flower that you get in the hills called the rhododendron the red color so you make goranj ka juice so these are all flowers and there are more to it that you can absolutely eat and do more healthy stuff so simply speaking on really the mother earth has so much to offer to us absolutely in in terms of color in terms of texture in terms of uh, you know diversification of so, mm. so many uh, different odds yeah. one thing that we really wanted to discuss today was how we can give back to mother earth especially in these times which are so alarming uh, these times when i always call them a time of uh, awakening mm -hmm. and we really wanted to discuss today when we spoke earlier that we as uh, uh, mankind what we can do to give back to mother earth and um, as a columnist as a thought processor as a traveler uh um, you know as a food connoisseur what can you say on really about today's times and how we should uh, use today as as you know maximizing our strength our potential in actually nurturing us and nurturing mother earth both ways simple vegenti one simple thing don't disturb the balance of nature for your own interest you grow along with nature not kill it and then grow you like it's like uh uh what do you call uh basically i'm forgetting that word that is basically uh together you're growing and together you're evolving because you both are dependent on each other at least let me say nature is not dependent on us to a greater extent we are more dependent on nature true so understand the importance that these trees and plants and food and uh, have around us also one important thing you know over the years i've seen that we have started uh, what we have done and done is we are not very focusing on seasonal vegetables like uh, uh, like cauliflower you get it 12 months a year okay growing up i have only seen cauliflower coming to my house during winter and i know by february or april uh, or my march mid there'll be no cauliflower in my house but now as i am here and the city i see cauliflower cabbage and all kind of vegetables available all 12 months yeah. so the importance of a fruit or a vegetable being seasonal is lost us yes also coming to think of it then if it's grown in a particular season it has the conducive it has the kind of environment the weather it needs to grow if you need to grow it in a different season that means you need artificial uh ingredients to make it grow which could be fertilized they're more like hybrids so, yes if you are maybe you're using extra fertilizers you are using hybrid so why disturb the balance so eat what is there in the season don't go for a thing that is not available yeah so and every season has a like when these new leaves are coming out now this new spring leaves you'll see around so you also see this new neem leaves coming out ha yeah. it suppose it is said eating neem leaves the fried with the brinjal or the way you want to make it absolutely helps you build your own immune system much better through the year so they all have a reason go for it understand recognize the things around you they'll help you in a better way so one can always read a lot google it and yes. you know uh, uh, uplift one's knowledge and yeah. skills about better eating better seasonal eating i should say yeah. yeah we do not understand that eating seasonally mm. you, even if it's it's more on carbs or more on certain fruits or vegetables which are high on on mm -hmm. risk of fat they are mm -hmm. good for our body because they are absolutely. seasonal yeah absolutely anything that's seasonal anything that's growing in a particular region has a reason to it so go and eat and our body has a way to behave to adapt to those particular ingredients don't debar them of that they kind of lose they kind of feel lost a body lost, lost. right right so yeah. and in uh, in the times that we are now uh, 
there's one very important question that I want to ask you is that you initiated that human being should slow down now. So what is this slowing down process according to you? Okay. It's like uh, if I'm having my morning cup of tea, let me not have it as a routine. Let me enjoy, understand, smell the flavor. It's like you smell it, sip it, soak it, and smile after it, and then get up at work. So that's what doing is all about. Sit, understand what's around you, soak into that whole environment. Give yourself, you know, idleness is no crime. You can sit idle for some time. You always don't need to be busy yes because i think this staying idle and not having an agenda not having a plan for tomorrow is something which is making people very uh, uncomfortable yeah, they're unnerved by it people are just yeah. talking about when when this lockdown will end we want it to end we are tired of it they're not valuing that they're getting this time to just be even if you take out three four months out of your life I know it is very easily said for the ones who are losing out on the wages, on the income, on the economic front. But I'm talking more in more general uh, terms that the ones who, who have the capacity to take a, a step back, they mm -hmm. are also complaining. So, Absolutely. Yeah, it's so, good to wake up, breathe, understand that you're here. And even, even when you're busy, even when the lockdown is not there, maybe you're busy in a day, you have a lot of work. You could spend that 10 minutes or 15 minutes just being idle with yourself. I mean, when I say idle, you could just feel the place that you are in. Half the time, we don't even realize what's happening around us. True. We are not aware of our environment. I see how True. we think. So True. just give that time to yourself, understand it, and things will fall in place for you. So like an extensive traveler like you, whose legs and whose feet don't stay back <laughs> home, who's always traveling, like I'll open your profile and once you're in Ladakh, the second day you're in Chittorgarh, you're in Greece to Europe, a person like you who's been globetrotting uh, everywhere, uh, exploring food, teaching students, putting up pop-ups, writing columns for the most extraordinary dailies and magazines. How are you taking this thing back uh, at, at, in this lockdown? And how are you uh, optimizing your time in this? Firstly, I would like to say I'm really, I'm really blessed in a way that I, since I stay alone by myself, thankfully, I have family back who are have, who have visiting me and they got locked out with me. So it's more of they have to deal with me a little more than I have to do it. But apart, jokes apart, the fact is, you know, my, I have a green patch around my place. And it's a lovely bloom. So for me, I can see the number of butterflies, every bloom, every petal opening. And there are ways that I'm trying to do things in my own way, maybe sitting idle, absolutely, and doing nothing. There are days when I'm cooking up a storm in the kitchen, experimenting with things like I've never thought of, like a pizza or maybe something more difficult than that. But uh, that at the end of the day, with the output, with the feel, and with what you're seeing, there's so many colors around you, with so much of flowers and blooming. And I know, oh, this new flower, and there are, there are these tomatoes which just started to bloom in my garden. And I go and pluck every day two or three of them. And so there are ways that you occupy yourself. And yes, a little reading, a little knickknack here and there. Yes, and I was coming to that, that because you have so much to share and your knowledge yeah. about food, travel, sustainability, zero waste, um, uh, is, is researching, uh, you know, your value towards research uh, is uh, very well uh, coordinated. So can you tell our viewers something special that they can pick, pick up as an e-book to read or any sites or which they can visit which might enlighten them, uh, you know, on the subject of food, travel, which they can't do physically now, but virtually they can, they can experience it. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, but I really can't get a book or something. But whatever you see around you, try to learn more about that thing. Uh, if you see a new vegetable, if you see a new fruit, if you see a new plant, explore it. There are ways, if you don't know the name, Technology has given you this easy thing called the Google Lens. Try to find out the name, read about it. Read about its utility. Everything will have a reason. Just uh, find out what's 
what is that one thing new you found every morning you wake up to see that one new thing or go to your kitchen see that one uh, new item that you want to work with or uh, learn about uh, I-, i would absolutely say if you to understand culture learn about tribe start reading about them they will absolutely help you understand how to co-live with nature that's they are a big example yes and which brings me to this another question that uh, when we're talking about living with nature that is like living with the food of that place living with the habitat of that place and that mm-hmm. is why you said to read more about tribe culture tribe mm-hmm. culture of india or tribe culture of any other country any other ha huh? this this very important question that how would you link culinary tourism to zero waste see uh suppose i give an example of myself when i'm taking uh, these people from the west to teach in my kitchen i am that kind of culinary tourism that's happening at my end i'm also showing them what all you can utilize throwing the minimum out so if i'm teaching them they may get the same kind of item at their place and they may not know for example a kagen i take up the cabbage you may not know to use the stems of the cabbage i'll teach them you can chop them and have a vegetable out of it it could be a different curry out of it hmm. i'll teach them to use suppose i'm making a mixed vegetable which has pumpkin and potato and other vegetables i will tell them to use the beans so this is what the main dish that could be a side dish so that's zero waste for me and a simple example that i would really ask everybody once this world opens up and people go out eating uh, it's a very small thing to notice but whenever we go out to restaurants to eat they fill our glass with water we never tell them to stop we should always ask them to fill it with half a glass it may look little it may at times people get feel bad why half a glass but that's also less wastage of water you may not be drinking the whole glass ask how much water you want true that's that's really so, really important yeah these are very small things and support small time restaurants or local uh, food things buy local cheese like this time from calcutta i picked up the bandel cheese which is the local cheese made in bandel so use those it's bandel easy to cheese. yeah yeah it's a very interesting cheese called the bandel cheese you, you get them kata? yeah yeah please yeah, you can pick it up kolkata and we don't know about it on really oh uh, you can make them you amazing dishes like weekly blog which you should write about certain things which are more local you should pick up this blog which should highlight <laughs> about the local stuff of a place because yeah. it is so interesting yeah in the same way we all love cheese cakes right we all go gaga lemon cheese where will you find this cheese cheese this bandel cheese in uh, you'll get it in the uh, uh, hog market there's a shop you'll get it okay. there all right uh, new market yeah and so there's like a cheese a soft cheese it it has a nice burnt smoky flavor it's little round in uh, shape more for uh, salad sorry is it more for salads you can yeah exactly you can use them for salads you can use them for your vietnamese thai uh, thai rolls rice paper rolls you can yeah. use them if you're making steam vegetable momos you can use them inside so it's a it's a very nice strong smell to it as not a, a pungent but a nice smoky smell to it That's so all. i think uh, today's conversation is really going uh, to a place where it doesn't need to stop pointedly we've uh, learned so much about sustainable travel from you about zero waste about exploring food the more local way about your pop ups and yes viewers if you want to know more about onjali please google her up please read her blogs and her articles in the most famous dailies and and magazines and you would know that when she travels when she cooks she is too too minutely placed with the detailing which is just so so awesome and uh, yes uh, in these times she's asked you to be more aware to be more in the moment to explore what comes new in front of you read about it because this is a time when we can uh, upgrade our skills about so many things for which we don't get the time otherwise absolutely because i feel that when we are traveling when we are experiencing something new we are letting our creativity our craftsmanship our memories really brush up and they get a lot of positive buffering which adds uh, so much to our credibility to good to good job so and really before we go today would you want to say anything else to the viewers add anything from your side 
for the times today, any skill in particular, anything about you that you would want to say to I, I really like the word that you use called positive buffering. Absolutely, buffer yourself from time to time, reboot, reinstall yourself, just like you do the apps, just like you do your phone, your life, you, you as a person needs to be rebooted from time to time. And there is no better time when you slow down and breathe in and feel and get in touch with your own self. And don't forget to drink enough water. That's very important. <laughs> and uh, so much uh, we got to learn today from you, Anjali. Which is Thank you. There. And to take these small detailings in notice, like not to waste water at restaurants or, you know, the idea of our travel is where, which is something so beautiful, which I learned today was not to carry our lifestyle there, but to bring their lifestyle back to our homes. So on that note, viewers, it's been a beautiful session with Oindruli today. Oindruli very much from the city of Joy, but now <laughs> based in Delhi. And I don't even say Delhi because she's all over the globe. And uh, women in stability in times of instability is a series where I bring in remarkable women to inspire, to motivate, to stir up those creative juices in us and not let us slow down in the negative way, but let us buffer in a way that we can yield better and more profounding results when all of this is over. So I'm looking forward to meeting with all of you again very soon with another remarkable lady. And we're going to discuss more about a different agenda. And I wish you all very, very, very awesome Sunday. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you, Anjali, for being here. for today. having me. And I'm Thank looking you. forward to meet you in Kolkata very soon. Absolutely. I expect to do that veg pop-up because it's, it's about time <laughs> that I enjoy a lovely meal cooked by you. And I'm craving the tomato ki sabzi cooked by auntie. That's it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Dear. All the very best to you and I'll see you Bye. Bye-bye. Stay well, stay happy. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.